Okay, so let's get into the topics for today's class. Uh, anyway. Record it. Let's record it. And if you check out the links, you can find out the video notes were already posted, even though there were not too many valuable stuff from the first lecture, just introduction. And also we are going to have a homework after today's class. And it's due next Wednesday. So keep checking this web page. You want to do it regularly. At least once a day. All right? So you want to see sometimes the due time probably will be changed. If I make some changes and I think you guys probably won't see it, I'm going to send an email to everyone. But normally, normally you will see that if you check this website every day. So homework one, I have three problems, 100 points in total. So three problems. I'm going to cover the, uh, these things, related problems today. So we'll be able to do the homework. And it's due next Wednesday, which means we're going to have a quiz on Wednesday as well regarding the DICs, how to do the calculation. Um, so think about that. If you work on homework one independently and seriously, you'll be able to get these two credits, right? You can get 100 here, 100 here. Otherwise, you'll fail both. It's pretty much the same thing. And I'm gonna keep adding homework assignments here. It depends on your pace. Since I don't have a established schedule, every time I teach it, it's gonna be different for the body of the students, you have a different background, different experience. Sometimes if you have to slow down, I'm going to slow down. You have to make it faster, I'm going to move faster. Depends on your response during the class. <laughs> um, okay, I will control the pain level to a pretty uh, reasonable range. So it's not very comfortable since you want to step out from the comfort zone, uh, but won't be very too painful as well. So you can learn. Okay. Um, all right. Let me do a really quick demo first. So this is something about the lab next Tuesday. <clears throat> so see, pay attention to the lab reports. Have you ever tried the submitting the web pages? To, okay, it works great. It's due Monday next week at ten p.m. So I suggest you do it way earlier compared to this deadline. You may have problems with uh, uh, FTP transmission, right? And I make sure it works. Do not just uh, send, a me send me an email at 9.55 p.m. saying, hey, the web page is not working, can you help me? No, it's too late. <laughs> but otherwise, I mean, if you need some help, even on Sunday or Saturday, if I have time, I will be able to log into, you know, with your account credentials and check out your HTML files, you know, open it up and see if there's any errors with the links. I'll fix it for you. I'll tell you. Um, but only in the first few weeks, not just like the lab 10, you are still having problem with the HTML. No, it's not reasonable. You need to learn it. And the videos and notes are uploaded, were uploaded uh, to here. Um, so you can refer to these ones, but do not just directly copy them for your lab reports. Um, since we have, I think you are being asked to do a hand calculation. So, I mean, the solutions are already provided here. If you have known that, I mean, <laughs> um, do not directly copy it. Since you have to deal with this problem sooner or later in quizzes, exams, everywhere, right? So next week will be a R2R DAC design. And the week after that will be a layout. Although it sounds scary, but actually it's not, since they are all ideal. We are going to design a fabricatable ADC in the end of semester, but not right now, since you haven't learned much. So these are ideal DACs just ideal components in Electric VLSI, which is another software. See here, it's called Electric, which is open source software you can download. I think I may have, uh, so follow the tutorials here to set up the Electric LTSpice configuration. And keep in mind, I have separate 
electric VLSI tutorials. And you can also find them from here, right? Go to, directly go to the homepage, the homepage. And tutorials, I have many other tutorials. So you see, for IC design, we have electric VLSI and cadence. So for electric VLSI, I have five tutorials. So definitely this is not, I'm not expecting you guys to finish all of them next week. They're super long. I spent about a month to create all the tutorials. Uh, so the labs for this class is different. These are more fundamental uh, testings. But for the labs, they are also electric VLSI labs, but they are different. But if you want to know how to set it up, you want to check out this link, which are going to direct you to the first tutorial from the five tutorials I just showed you. So you can install it, set it up. It's pretty long, but easy, okay? You don't have to go through everything in this tutorial. Just set it up and then jump back to this lab. And you need to download the library cells. They are actually just uh, pre-designed cells you can load into your electric VSI software. I just download it and load it. This is telling you every single step how to load it. After you load it, you can see these two blocks. The first one is a 10-bit ideal ADC. So it's an ADC, so that's why it's converting analog signal into digital. And digital, they are just binary, one zeros. And we have 10-bit or 10 bits, right? So 10 bit ADC. So we have 10 bits as the output from zero to nine. And there will be all different digital combinations, one zero, one zeros, zero ones, um, which is, it represents the analog point as a moment, right? And then we have a DAC. It's also ideal DAC to convert the digital signal into analog. Just trying to see if we can convert it back into a discrete signal. Because the ADC and DACs are not, ID, uh, are not uh, only has 10 bits, right? It's not like infinite number of bits. So we'll eventually see uh, little steps. It has a uh, finite resolution. So you cannot get a super smooth analog signal as an output. You'll see that. So the blue line, the blue color waveform is a analog input. You can see it's smooth. It's a sine wave, smooth sine wave. But after conversion, because the ADC has a finite resolution, so it's not able to resolve every single value. So it's actually giving you stages. So which means in between these two stages cannot be resolved. I mean, so if there's a value here, it's going to be either this value or this value as the output, but not anything in between because the resolution is low and not resolve whatever in, in the middle. So that's why it's not a continuous signal. That's why the output, eventual output from the DAC is a discrete signal, has all the stages. But you can use a low pass filter to smooth it out. So it's charging and discharging. Remember we did that, it's RC delay. For these little steps, it's a very sharp step. But here is the sharp steps are, are bad because you don't want that to be sharp. You don't want that to be smooth. So the way to do that is just to use a, a low pass filter, which is actually a RC circuit to delay it. So it becomes like a pretty slow ramp. So it's being smoothed out, right? That's how you do it. But eventually you are getting a delay for the peak. So the peak probably will be shifted a little bit uh, backwards. Um, so that's how that works. You use a ADC, DAC, and eventually you still have to smooth it out. And after using the ideal DACs, and you are being, you are going to do a, a R2R, that's a R2R ladder, DAC. That's something you can fabricate it because you can definitely design and lay out resistors in the IC chips on silicon. We are going to use n -wells. I'm gonna cover that later. It's a type of um, material, you can say, being directly uh, implanted into the wafer. 
and you can use that as a resistor. But they are tiny, you know. The, 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 the silicon die I just showed you was only like 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter. The resistors can be in the micrometer level, super small. But you can create a string of resistors and use that one as a DAC. So it's going to be a DAC. And how, why is it going to be a DAC? We're going to do the calculation. And that's important because it's going to, be, it's going to show up on the quiz on Wednesday next week. Is that clear? We're going to do the calculation. You will know every single detail about it. Okay. And so, so then you, so what you're going to do next week is to create this schematic of uh, resistor strings and put in a box, like a symbol, and plug it back into that schematic to replace that ideal DAC, right? So we are having R to R ladder. That's your DAC, which is fabricatable. And let's see if you can get the same result. And it's very similar, right? It works. So you are confident that your DAC is going to work with all the resistor strings. And then the week after next week, since you know the schematic, schematic works, so you know the theory works, and then you just laid it out, right? Using the unwells. That's how you laid it out. It's going to be a physical. It's a physical layout. So whatever you are laying out here, right, will be fabricated on the chip. If you are going to fabricate it anyway, but this is fabricatable, right? So it's going to be, so the layout is actually a mask. So you're actually drawing a mask, like a cat design. And that mask will be being put in the middle of the wafer with a photoresist, you know, is a photosensitive material, and the laser, the UV laser. Then they expose that wafer with a mask in the middle. So it's going to print that feature, whatever you're drawing, onto the uh, a photosensitive material. And then you can etch it so the, the, the ones with uh, exposed, so the exposed uh, uh, like traces, resistors, resistors will stay there, but all the other materials will be etched away from the wafer. So that's just part of the IC manufacture, manufacturing uh, process. But there, there might be hundreds of steps to etching, depositing metals, and also implanting or doping materials into the wafer and hundreds of steps to make a, a IC chip, functioning IC chip, starting from sands, right? <laughs> they collect sands from the desert and make it into silicon and then cut into wafers and then ICs. Uh, depending on the size, right? It can, can be different. Yeah. So every foundry, I think the plant probably will cost billions of dollars. So that's why the bar is very high. If you want to start a business, it's easy to start a business like Steamworks, but not a foundry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, There are not too many foundries in the US. I mean, Global Foundry, Intel had one, TSMC had one in Arizona, several others. But the biggest one, the biggest ones are in either Taiwan or Korea. Um, so Korea has quite a few really big ones for memory. Samsung used to be the number one biggest foundry, but now it's TSMC everywhere, starting from the 25 nanometer technology to 10 to five to two right now. It's not ready yet, but probably a few years later, maybe next year, two, three nanometer will be available. So right now I think it's five. I think the newest iPhone is using five. It's just uh, like tons of items for each transistor. <laughs> if you can find out something else, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you know what the scope of the recent few weeks, right? Let's do the calculation. See how that works, how that DAC works. So we still have to start with uh, Superposition, which you hate the most, since you can use a way, way easier way to do the calculation, but you have to, you know, analyze every single source in the circuit. I hate this shit. I think you probably will see that.
So let's look at one example here. It's very similar to the R to R ladder. Not exactly that one, but similar. Okay, here's a schematic. I got another voltage source, another voltage source. Ground it. Ground it. That's V1. That's R1. R2. R3. V3. V2. And that's the V out. So I'm asking you, what is V out? The output voltage. So what I'm asking you, what is V out? Means what's the voltage at this point? So it's the node voltage. Compared to where? No. What I'm saying the node, since all the voltages are relative, right? I'm asking you the point, the voltage at this point. So what's the voltage at this point? Compared to where? Ground. So that's VL. Oh, um, okay. And how do you calculate VL? If you do not have superposition, can you calculate VL? What's the best way to calculate VL if this is only purpose? Mesh. What about mesh? Right, so they are all grounded, just one, two, three, oh, even not three, just two, done. Just list all the linear equations, only two, two equations. But now we are doing it in a difficult way. <laughs> Superposition, because it's gonna be easier for other examples, not this one. That's why I need to know that. Um, superposition, first, V1 only. So we need to short these two sources. It's going to be V1 only with this resistor, this resistor, R2, R3, R1, V1. And that's V out. Still these two point, two terminals. No change. So let's find out. Do we need to calculate the voltages for each component in this specific example? What? Just VL, right? So that's what we are calculating. We don't care about these voltage, other voltages. So literally just VL, and which is also the voltage across R3, right? So V1 only, so what is V out? How to do it? Voltage divider, right? So just find out these four in parallel. And then in series with R1, so if you use the voltage divider theory, if you don't know what is that or you are not familiar with that, check out what? The video from last lab or yesterday, yesterday's lab. Notes, videos are there. Check out, make sure you are crystal clear with voltage divider theory. You can use it just like what I'm using like this, right? Just whenever you need it, just use it. You don't need to do the mesh. So now what is VL? Easy. V1 times what? R2 in parallel with R3 over R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3. Done. Any questions? Feel free to ask. Right, V2 only. So this will be shorted, this will be shorted. You're only having V2, R2, R1, this is shorted to the ground. This is also shorted to the ground, so R3. Uh, v out, still the voltage across R3. So what is VL? Would you like to, you know, rotate it a little bit so it's easier to look at? So how? Starting from the voltage source, right? So the voltage is gonna inject a current. 
upwards, going up and being split into two branches, and then go back to ground at the same time. So which means the circuit is actually this. R2, and then two branches go to ground, go to ground. So that's R1, that's R3, that's R2, that's V1, that's V1, that's VL. Correct? So VL equals to what? In this case, let's label this VL1, VL2. It's a second VL. What is VL in this case? So the same voltage divider series. You got two resistors just in parallel and combine them. They are getting V1 times R1 in parallel with R3 and over R2 plus R1 in parallel with R3. Okay, that's the second one, V2 only. And then the last one, V3 only. V3 only, short, R1, R2, short, R3, V3, oh, sorry, V3, and VL, VL3. Ground. Still the same circuit. It just rotated. Oh, R1. R4. This is R1. It's the same theory, right? It's the same voltage divider, but different, with different resistors at different locations. It's running parallel. And VL is the voltage share of this parallel resistor. I got R3 here, so it's dividing the voltage. So VL3 equals to V1 times R1 in parallel is R2 over R3 plus R1 in parallel is R2. So finally, we got V out equals to V out one plus V out two plus V out three, which is V one time uh, we want V one times all the other things being added together. The first one is R two in parallel with R3 over R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3. You don't have to calculate from here, right? You just need to plug in later. Plus R1 in parallel with R3, R2 plus R1 in parallel with R3, plus this guy, R1 in parallel with R2. R3 plus R1 in parallel with R2. So if you have a number, the values for the resistors or voltages, you can plug in and find out the voltage. Okay. That's the first example. And Second, let's talk about DACs. DACs have digital input. Uh, 
as a DAC for, for instance and has a VREF as a reference voltage and has all these inputs from uh, D0, D1 to Dn minus 1 if this is an n bit DAC so there are n bits because it's from 0 starting from 0 to n minus 1 and there must be output so that's a symbol of the DAC so the circuits inside is you know, can be a resistor string, can be a capacitor string, we're going to cover both. Uh, but let's start with a, a resistor string first. But also, there are some parameter, parameters you need to know. And you're going to see these parameters as well in your homework one. So when there is a parallel digital input, like 0, 1, 1, 0, blah, 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 and then it's going to convert everything into an analog voltage output. Right, in decimal, you you can you can use. And there is a parameter called fraction f. Is fraction. So f equals to d over two to the nth, and d is the input word. Yeah, just digital, digital value. Can be any combination of the ones and zeros. And that's the entire amount of stages or uh, possibilities of the uh, conversions for this n bit DAC. Two to the n's because you have totally n bits. So totally two to the n's combinations. Make sense? And that's uh, so totally you have this many combinations, or you can see this is the full range. And here is your input at this moment. So definitely it's not all ones, right? It's, it's can be one zero zero one, there are, there are some zeros in the middle. So that's the fraction. It's called a fraction. And the reason we need this one is being used for another equation. So VL equals to VREF times F. So VREF times F, which is VREF times D over 2N. That's how you calculate VL. So it's analog voltage. For example. There's a three bit DAC. At some moment, the input is one zero zero binary. And VREF is five volts. So what is VL? Yeah, using this equation, right? So V out equals to 5 volts times F. F is 100 in binary. That's the current input over 2 to the how many? 3. This will be 5 volts times what is one zero zero? Four? Is that four? Or a? Or two? Four. So one zero zero, this bit represent two to the zero. This is two to the first, two to the second. So it's four. Four over what? Eight. It's two point five volts. So if you give a, uh, if you have a three bit DAC here, you got one zero zero. You're getting two point five. Fifty percent.
Wait, is this correct? Oh, yeah, that's right. So the input range. of a 3 bit DIC is what? What's the input range? Definitely starting with 0, 0. To what? What's the maximum input? 1, 1, right? 7, okay? And so what's the maximum output? So just use a calculation, use a, it's going to be V full, uh, full scale, right? It's full scale, FS, full scale, V. It's going to be 2 in general, 2 to the nth minus 1 over 2 to the nth times the V ref. Is that true? Y has to be minus 1. That's the last. That, that's the largest input you can get. If it's a three bit, it's going to be seven, which is this guy, right? Okay. One more example. <laughs> Find the resolution for a deck if the output voltage is desired to change. In one millivolts increments while well, using a reference of five volts. So if there's a temperature sensor, for example, it's converting the temperature into voltages. So you need an ADC to um, you know, since that one millivolts change. For example, one millivolts represents like 0 0.01 Celsius degree. And you do want a DAC to sense that. It has, has to, so the resolution or sensitivity has to be one, one millivolts. Otherwise, whenever it's changing the one millivolts range, it's not able to sense it. That's pretty bad. So you want to sense that one millivolts. So how many bits do you need? For that purpose, if you have a 5 volts reference, so look at your the equations we just uh, introduced. So the equation I want to use is we know the full range is 5 volts and How many steps do we have? Two to the n's. And I don't know what is n. And I want this little tiny step, that's a, every single step, to be one millivolts, at least. So I'm gonna do the calculation and find out what is n, and starting from there. <clears throat> so two to the n's equals two, five what? According to this equation, 5,000. And then what? Log 2 to n 
equals to log 2, 5,000. And here's n equals to log 2, 5,000. And use a calculator, you can find out this is actually 12.29 bits. Is that possible? Can you have a fractional bit? No. 13, right? Since we need at least one millivolts, it's not hurting anything if it's more sensitive. Right, so 13 bits are needed. <clears throat> Then the R to R ladder. We may come back to another concept, but let's do this first because it's uh, it's in the in the homework. The R to R ladder, or is R to R DAC? Schematic looks like this. Have a ground. Resistor, 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 resistor. Like this. And here's VL. And the resistance are 2R, R. It can be 1K, 2Ks, right? It's just showing you that it's doubling that resistance. It's R to R, R to R, R to R. And these are the inputs, are the bits, the inputs of the DAC. If you ever seen a black box, so you are having a uh, four bit, four bit DAC, that's VL, that's analog, analog output. And these are the inputs. So one quick question before we do any calculations, intuitively, intuitively. These are the four inputs. So which is LSB, which is MSB. So inputs, right? So they are receiving what? Receiving what signal? For the DAC. Digital signal, one zeros, right? So there must be a MSB and LSB, which means the MSB is it's a logic one that's contributing more voltages to the output. So which is LSB, which is MSB? Is it MSB? So if I put a logic one here, like five volts, for example, and it's gonna be divided crazily. So if I apply voltage here, it's directly contributing to here. So that's why this is um, MSB. So, D0, D1, D2, D3. And the input can be anything. Can be 1000, can be 1111, can be 001, whatever. You have 16 combinations for the four bit binary input. How do we do the calculation though? Let's assume one situation first. So what if it's one 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 one? I'm gonna write it down like this. So I must be first. So one is what? So VDD is one, right? Logic one, voltage high, whatever you want to call it. Or you can just directly draw an um, equivalent circuit. It's actually just directly shorting this to the voltage source, right? For everyone. So now this looks more familiar. We have done that just now.
Similar, right? Just VDD. We don't we don't need the value right now. So yeah, all, all these voltage sources. Think about mesh. It'll give you a mess. <laughs> so be a lot of linear equations, right? So it's not an ideal method to be used. So actually, superposition is better in this case. So the first thing you want to do is starting from here, since there are all VDDs being shorted to these uh, digital inputs. And so you want to look at this one first. Look at this one first. And short all these other ones to ground. So you are getting. Okay, so you are getting your, you're trying to calculate the first VL, VL1. Is this something like you have done? It's pretty easy to do, I guess. And so to R, to R, R, to R, R, to R, R, to R. How? So you treat everything here as a load. Right? Just look, just block this part. Treat everything else here as a load. And convert this thing into a seven is equivalent. So what is that equivalent circuit? What is the equivalent circuit of this guy? That's VDD. What's the seven is equivalent for this guy? So nothing here is going to be involved because they are the load being removed for seven is equivalent. So what's the seven is equivalent circuit for this guy? So let me try it. So I'm just looking at this part, right? So it's actually something like this. And here's the load has been removed. Is that easy? Just convert into 70s. So what is RTH? What is VTH? RTH, short this guy, and look backwards. What is R? If you short it, looking backwards, what's R? 1R. Is that 1R? Short it, like, see, see my fingers, my fingers are wires, right? My fingers are wires. And you're looking backwards, looking backwards. So this parallel network is giving you 1R. So RTH is 1R, is R. What is VTH? Just find the voltage here. Voltage divider, right? A half. So this entire thing, doesn't matter what, what is going on here. I don't care there's a load. Load, load. I'm going to convert this guy into... This is VDD over 2. What is this? R? Right? Clear? Then these two are being combined into a 2R. Am I done with this voltage source yet? 
I'm doing superposition. There are four voltage sources. I'm doing one by one. And I'll find out the influence of that voltage source for every individual voltage source to VL1 or to V out. So now I'm looking at V, I'm trying to calculate VL1, right? Still, still not done yet. I'm not done yet. Because I'm not getting VL1 yet. So these grounds are still valid because they are being shorted. The voltage source are being shorted to the ground. I'm still doing V, v still doing VL1. And see here, VDD over two, and I'm getting a 2R, 2R. It's the same circuit as this one. So 2R, 2R voltage divider, and I treat this thing as a load. So still the, still the same 2Rs, but the voltage source is, has been changed to VDD over two, not VDD anymore. So what's the equivalent circuit of this part? VDD over what? Four. What is this resistor being shorted here? R. So I'm getting another two R. It's just repeating. So I'm expecting that there will be another. So the voltage, when the voltage is being sent to this point, it becomes VDD over what? Eight. I still have a resistor, which is R. It's still the same. And you don't need to do the 70s equivalent anymore because it's a direct voltage divider. 2R here, 2R here, divided by two halves. So what's V out one? That's 2R here, divided by two 2Rs. Two Still 70s, but we are not, we don't, you don't even need 70s. So that's the eventual circuit. You have this guy, 4R, 4R, VDD over A. What's the voltage here? 2R, 2R, 2R. Right? And now let's see if it's making sense. I turn on this speed. I just flip this speed and turn it on to be a voltage high. But eventually, this guy only contributes VDD over. 16 to VL because it's LSB, right? It's LSB. It's only contributing one stage. How many stages do you have? 16. 16 stages, right? So this guy is only contributing one 16. So that's why it's LSB. Yeah, silver position at 70 is until here, right? So that's how you can find out VL1. For, this, uh, for the other voltages, same theory. It can be even either because you are not going to do it all the, all the way to here. What's going to happen is if you are, you only have this bit flipped. This is ground. If this is ground, easy because two parallel resistors will be one, R. R plus R is 2R. You are just like merging all these 2Rs like class to the to here, then you are done. So whenever it's getting closer to this part, it's actually either. So let me ask you a question. If I contrib if I flip this bit to be VDD, but all the other ones to be zeros, what is VL? One half. Is that one half? Because it's a voltage divider. All the following resistors will be one uh, eventually. 
and that following resistors becomes one, and as this one R, it's going to be a two R. So two R, two R is dividing this input voltage in two halves. You just draw it, just draw it, okay? It's recorded. Just watch the video, draw it, practice it. You just have to practice it. If you just look at it, you won't get you won't get there, okay? It's gonna show showing up in a quiz on next Wednesday, homework assignments, exams, midterms, finals. Your bathroom in the, everywhere, you know, lunch and <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right? You just want to be sure you want to do it, you can do it. So you're not giving up, you're not quitting, okay? You do well in the very first few weeks, you'll do well for the entire semester, you're getting confidence. And this is easy, it's recorded, right? It's easy. Hope everyone can, can get a hundred on the quiz next Wednesday. Let's make it happen, okay? Any questions? There may be other things. So sometimes they will con uh, they will connect the output to an op-amp. How many of you have taken analog or are taking analog? You have, but you guys, are you taking analog right now? No? You haven't? You have, okay. But I will explain op-amps. Uh, so you learn op-amps in circuit one at least, right? So should be fine okay all right we'll see you on friday i guess right